Electric scooters are one of the most exciting developments coming from the electric vehicle industry right now. The low cost, low barrier to entry and low emissions are proving incredibly popular with commuters and enthusiasts alike. But as with most innovations, the development of electric scooters didn't happen overnight and is closely linked to the development of electric bikes. But let's start from the very beginning. At the end of the 19th century, cars didn't exist. Personal transportation was still mainly horse-drawn carriages, however, there was constant innovation around oil, steam and most importantly, electricity. These exciting changes could be seen in a number of different ways. There were street cars, basically early versions of trams, which created enormous demand for electric power. There were the first public street lighting which was being introduced in the form of arc lamps and there were also rudimentary transmission lines being used by engineers as they struggled to get power delivered to different areas. Then in 1895 an American inventor filed a patent for a bicycle with an electrical motor. His name was Ogden Bolton Jr. Very little is known about him that's not found within the patent. His idea was fairly simple. It was for a DC motor to be installed within a bike's rear wheel hub. It could take up to 100 amps from a 10V battery. The battery was stored under the horizontal tube of the bike frame. If this is sounding familiar, it might be because many e-bikes and e-scooters today have a somewhat similar core design. However, this patent offered no gear system, so it's likely that the bike wouldn't run for very long and output a very limited performance. There is not much more we know about Ogden and his hub motor, but this was the first recorded origin of the scooters we have today. Between 1895 and 1915 were many more attempts at designing electrical bicycles. In 1897, Jose Libby created a mid-drive bike where all the driving mechanisms were fixed under the seat and between the wheels. It can be seen on the patent application that it didn't have any pedals so could be considered as a type of e-scooter. There were many more interesting inventions in similar veins. The British company Humber created an electrical tandem bike in 1897. In 1900, Ebert Hansel used a frame mountain jack shaft to power the left side of the rear wheel which has ever been used recently as an e-bike propulsion system. Within these 20 years, e-bike development was quite considerable but nothing really matched what we would consider a motorized scooter until 1915. Although the Altopad is a petroleum powered scooter, it is the first recorded existence that we know of that has the same core design as a modern motorized stand-up scooter. It's built with a reduced frame, requires the users to stand up and is controlled through a vertical handlebar. This was manufactured in the United States until 1921 and was generally quite popular with traffic cops. It was also popular with a now famous lady Florence Norman, an English suffragette, socialist and activist who had a photo taken of her on an autopad in 1916. The autopad was continued to be manufactured in Germany by Krupp from 1919 to 1922. Despite a number of general innovations in electric motor technology and e-bike advancement, there were relatively few advancements in the e-scooter industry for many years. Until 1986. Like the Autopad 71 years before, the Goped Roadster and the Goped Sport were motorized stand-up kick scooters. They look very similar to the standard kick scooters of today, except with a small gas motor attached to the back wheel to provide the power. In the next decade, there were minimal advancements in the technology that GoPad had utilized. However, electric moped-like scooters were being researched and developed by numerous companies. In 1996, the first successful electric scooter, the Peugeot Scoot Elect, officially hit the market. This looks like a standard moped, but was in fact a sit-down electric scooter. It had a range of around 25 miles, could do 31 miles per hour, and was in production for 10 years with roughly 3,500 units sold. This was the first successful introduction the world had to electric scooters. Then in 2001, GoPad released the hoverboard. 
This is a large and clunky kick scooter that is powered by an electric motor, making it the first ever production e-scooter and is what all of today's e-scooters originate from. Since then, there have been many dedicated people and innovative companies working on similar projects, but with the progression of battery technology in the last few years, we are only now starting to see what electric scooters can really do. Electric scooters are part of the world as we know it right now and can all trace their roots back over a century. Their development has dramatically increased over the last few years due to improvements in battery and electric motor technology and we are looking forward to seeing where things go in the next few years. If you want to know more about electric scooters, head over to our website altwriters.com where you will find a lot of resources, reviews and much more.